Good morning, it's Monday, April 6th. We're reading through the Old Testament in Judges and through the Gospel of Luke. And our reading this morning uh, begins in Judges chapters 18 and 19. This is a horrible low. I talked about a low in terms of Jephthah and his foolish vow. But in chapters 18 and 19, you kind of see a absolutely horrible low in Israel with this uh, story of the Levite's concubine, which is bad enough just to even say that sentence, but to see the um, rape and murder of this woman and then the dismemberment of this woman. It's like you're watching some kind of uh, documentary on some crime channel. It's an awful story. And here is uh, the nation of Israel, God's covenant people, leaders in the nation, and we see the worst of things happening here in this chapter. Uh, we see at the beginning, I should even put this in proper sequence, Dan is engaged in idolatry. Uh, Dan has got a lot of problems in their territory up north. We start reading about that early on in our reading and uh, we see the trouble that they get into and then you see some of the effects of it in chapter 19 with this Levite and the concubine. So idolatry, departing from God, leads to all kinds of cascading effects and the ripple effect of the sin throughout the nation. Uh, New Testament readings in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, we got the second half of the chapter. We see Jesus being tested with the question, who is my neighbor? Well, first it was a whole question about um, what is the best, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus talks about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and then love your neighbors yourself. Now this guy tries to justify himself by saying, well, who is my neighbor? Because he tries to want, he tries to say that he's doing that, but then he has to narrow that down. It must have been some kind of a moment of clarity in his conscience where he then recognizes that uh, that's a pretty high calling to love other people as yourself. And so Jesus tells the story of what we call the Good Samaritan. Don't forget the hostility, the natural hostility that existed between Samaria, this central section in Israel, and uh, Judah and Israel in the south and even in the north. The Galileans up north, they had an association with, with Jerusalem, of course, and there was a a hatred really for the Samaritans. It'd be better to be a Gentile than to be a Samaritan because the Samaritans were these intermarried northern tribe members with the Assyrians back in the 8th century BC. And for them, uh, down in, in Jerusalem and in Judea and up in Galilee, these Jews thought that they were complete sellouts. And so you have a story of this Samaritan who had uh, no reason to stop and help this Jewish man who had been beaten on this road by criminals is an amazing thing. To pay his hospital bills, to care for him, to bandage him up, to pour oil on his wounds and, and take care of him on his own animal. That was just an, an amazing expression of loving people when you wouldn't be expected to, expecting nothing in return. Um, just a great story. So put that in its context. And of course, we end with that short little story of Mary and Martha. And that's a helpful reminder for us not to be so distracted by things in this COVID-19 epidemic that they're in the middle of this pandemic. We need to remember that uh, taking all these normal things out of our schedule doesn't mean we still aren't going to be distracted. Actually, that word distracted really gets to the root of the problem of anxiety and worry that our mind is in a million different places. And Martha's got that problem and Mary's sitting at the feet of Christ. And of course, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, why are you worried and troubled about so many things? So hopefully you can find the rebuke in that if the shoe fits in that particular passage and we can say we need to sit and choose the better part of having our clarity and focus on our devotion to the Lord. Our New Testament one another that we're going to have us focus on today is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. And it says we are through love to serve one another. Through love, serve one another. That word serve there, the verb form is the same word that we often talk about when we talk about the word slave or servant, doulos. Um, this is the verbal form that we are to engage in the relationship with each other out of love, not out of some kind of conscription or dutiful like I have to, but I want to serve you like a person would want to serve someone that they were um, subordinate to. And that's the idea. Uh, like a like a butler or a waiter or a, you know a, a steward on a on a plane a flight attendant to be a servant to someone like Jesus who bound himself like a servant and washed the feet of the disciples um, this is the picture here to be a, a servant and make sure that it's motivated by love in Galatians chapter five if you know the book of Galatians the conflict there about the law the ceremonial law circumcision and the things that related to circumcision and the ceremonial issues of, of dietary laws and the rest, that was dividing up uh, the church. Now, there were some that were insisting on those things as a means of salvation, 
And he gets to the end of this, and it sounds a lot like Romans 14, that you need to respect people. Uh, even if we understand our doctrine rightly, we can't uh, use our freedom as a covering for evil. We've got to love one another, even in the things we choose to do, giving up some of our freedoms and rights to love people. And that's the picture here, like a, a servant would, to put aside our own agenda to be able to serve others out of love. Committed to their well-being. That's what love is, right? Committed to your well-being. That's what it means to love. And then in this text, it says you ought to, through love, serve one another. So today, get out there and do something. I say get out there, digitally at least, during this time, and do something to show your love as a servant would in basically saying, at least in our minds, if not with our mouths, how can I serve you. We should really love to be in that role of serving other people. And Jesus said that uh, in this very chapter um, that in our daily Bible reading, that uh, that's what it is to be a leader, is to be a servant of all. The chief among you must be like the least, like the smallest, like the one who serves the other people. Great word, great concept. So today, let's focus on serving one another. And if you want to think of some creative ways to serve people. Maybe you've thought of some ways to do that. Uh, I know if you're watching this on YouTube, you might want to comment on that. We haven't been doing much of that. I haven't called you to that. But leave us a comment about ways maybe that you have creatively served someone or the way that someone has creatively served you. We'd love to hear that uh, about that down there in the comments. And We'll get back to our Bible reading tomorrow.